Hi Trojans. So I'm skipping ahead in my presentation of the 10 tips for student-centered learning because I really want to focus on reflections. Finals are coming up. It's the end of the semester and one of my favorite things to do at the end of the semester is to have students reflect on their learning. Now I do a lot of things with reflections, um, especially as an AVID teacher. Um, like for example, my students reflect at least once a week. Um, on Friday we do our weekly reflections where I have them summarize the concepts that they've learned in each one of their classes and to also kind of like do grade checks and homework checks and all of that stuff. But really kind of um, having them think over what they've done for the week. So having them think of not just the assignments that they're doing, but the, the skills that they're learning. And I find that really kind of helps just kind of reinforce what's going on in the classrooms and for students to really kind of reflect on what they've done that week and what um, new material that they've learned and, and to really kind of solidify that material too. Um, and kind of helps with like them forgetting about things as well. Uh, but there's a couple of ways we can do reflections and to build in reflections. One of my favorite things to do for the uh, quarter or the semester grades is these grade justifications. So having students justify the grades that they think they've earned in the class. And so there's two ways I've done it. I've done it written or um, like verbally through either like Flipgrid or one-on-one -on -one conferences. I usually give the written form out even if I'm not really checking it, if I'm only checking like the verbal form but uh, just so they have a way to do like sentence frames and things like that. Um, sometimes I've required both but it really just depends on what we have going on that quarter or semester. But these great justifications are great. As an English teacher I really wanted to build in students having to like provide evidence and justifications and pretty much everything that we did and so this was a one way for them to do that for they had to provide evidence but they also got a chance to kind of talk about what they thought so far and also um, as a way to kind of hold them a little accountable and then uh, to have me check over their grades so most of the time the grades that they put was the grades that kind of match with what I had in the grade book and thought they deserved as well but sometimes students like caught things that I didn't and this was a way for them to kind of voice that opinion um, we know that some students are kind of really shy and don't really want to talk to us they're scared of us and so this was a way for them to kind of like let me know that something needed to be fixed too so just some really great ways. So with that great justification, um, we always start with the claim. So looking at like claim evidence and reasoning, that is my whole point there. So with their claim, like what grade, like they deserve a blank for the quarter, they deserve a blank for the semester, and then providing evidence. So these were assignments that we've done in class. And so um, it can't, most of the time students showcase like their best assignments, like they're really proud of assignments, but I told them they don't necessarily need to do that. So they could pick an assignment um, that maybe they didn't do so well on, but and had them go to tutorial and they worked on it and they revised it and then they did awesome on it or like they, they at least learned something from it and grew from it. So um, that's one of the really cool things about having these evidence built in is that sometimes the assignments that students chose or their evidence that they chose are things that they really grew from and that's that's exactly what I want to have them reflect on and to look at. So that uh, the other thing with that is that it lets me know okay what things are they like really holding and grasping onto and what are the things that they're maybe not holding onto or that's not really something that everybody's picking and it kind of let me kind of clue in to what the students were thinking about the semester and the assignments that we're doing and the, the activities and the skills that we were learning in class. As I said, I also do this verbally. So when I first started doing this, I had one-on-one -on -one conferences. So I would have students bring their grade justification up to me and we would have a little conference about it. Um, but we know that one-on-one -on -one conferences takes time. So I would have to do this like weeks in advance so that I had time to like meet with everybody because I couldn't meet with everybody in one class period. So one way to kind of navigate that is I started having them do it on Flipgrid. So that way after class, I could listen to it. I could respond back to them. And, you know, even if it's just a quick like, yep, I agree with everything that you said. But that way we could have like a little virtual 
um, asynchronous conference going on. But I, I love this Flipgrid. Um, this Flipgrid link here, which I'll also put in the descriptions below, has uh, is through at, on the Discovery Library, so you can just use it in your classes and be done with it. Um, as far as other reflections go, one thing that's really big in my classroom too is the ePortfolios. Now at Alice Allen in our district, this is something that every student should have, whether it gets updated regularly or not <laughs> is a question, but every student should have an ePortfolio that they started their freshman year. And this is a way that they can showcase the things that they're proud of. And so in my class, I had them look at all of their classes and do a an update of their whole entire ePortfolio. But in your content area classes, you could have them just update the content for your class, have them submit the link to you, and then you can just kind of look at that. Again, this is also a great way to see what are students proud of? What work do they really take ownership of? And what work do they not really like? What are the things that are kind of missing that you're seeing um, as you're reviewing these ePortfolios? But I just have them update it um, Put in an assignment that they're proud of why they're proud of that assignment for that particular class and then a really simple way that we can celebrate learning and reflect reflections is um, i've done padlets where i just had like celebrate their learning and this could be academic learning or not um most, like at least the time i did this and just something that they're proud of um something that they are celebrating so um like i had students write about maintaining a's all year. I had students talking about reaching um, a challenging level in a video game, about having a positive mindset, and really just celebrating that learning. And again, to celebrating the learning that's happening outside of our classrooms as well, and to kind of see what things students are drawn to. So just some things to keep in mind. Um, the last thing I want to talk about with reflections is I think it's really important. And one thing that I think is missing and a lot of, uh, or just missing when we talk about assessments is having students reflect on their assessments. So when you give a test, what do you do with that test? Or when you give a district assessment, where's the buy-in for students there? And one thing that I did um, as an English teacher was looking at our STAR and then also our district um, assessments as we got into that. But what, what I had them do is I actually had them track their progress. So students in our district take the STAR test, um, you know, from the time they come into it. So we have a lot of data on our students. So I created a chart. Um, it was a little tedious because I actually put in the inputs for each individual student for their STAR scores for from beforehand. And then when they started taking the start in my class, I would actually give them their scores and they input it on their own. But what this really gives is a really strong visual of learning um, in the class. So as we can see that, and, and we talk about how learning, like you can't, you're just not going to do better on a test just because you're older. And so looking at the ups and downs that come with learning, especially with reading assessments. And so then I had them reflect on their growth. So they did it, um, looked at their reflections from, you know, when they took it in January or in August and said, like, what was their change? Like, how do they feel about that change? And so looking at, you know, if they dropped, what are some reasons they dropped? Most of the time, um, especially when I taught freshmen, it was because, you know, they started take, doing more clubs and activities and sports, and they realized that they weren't really reading anymore. And so we talked about growth and how learning um, is a continual process. And that was a really awesome tool to have. Um, with that as well, um, so I have the template here. I'll also put it on there. Just realize that it's a little messed up here, um, but you can use this template for any of your tests to change. Um, I have assignments and and uh, equations in that, so it kind of already automatically fills out everything. And then the last thing I want to talk about is iterations. And I haven't necessarily done this in my class. Um, we do look at drafts when we talk about writing, but since uh, one thing that I think is really cool, this was done in a science classroom, but really have them look at their different examples of things and how we can add more examples and how we can grow from that. So how can we take um, for this, they added in more context. So kind of thinking of learning as a draft form. So maybe have them do something at the beginning of the unit and then have them, 
kind of redo that activity, but now that they have more knowledge, more information to reflect on their learning, it should grow a little bit more. Uh, it's kind of like, I, I saw this example of a butterfly, like when you first like draw a butterfly, you might just draw like kind of a stick butterfly. And then as you learn more and grow more and add more things and edit things, it becomes looking like more like a realistic butterfly. So just some things to think about there. Um, with reflections, but I highly recommend to build in reflection time. Um, these are also great if you don't want, you know, if you have a certain final that you're doing, or if you have a certain activity that you're already doing for, for finals time, I find that reflections are a really great time to put in. Like when we have that hour that we, that aren't finals, <laughs> um, especially when we have like periods one and two happening after they've already taken the final, a couple of days after they've taken the final. So having them like reflect, even if it's just like a 10 minute reflection um, during that time period or during the half of a minimum day that we have, um, we can kind of build in these times so we still get academic learning happening um, in those classrooms. So if you have any questions, please. Let me know.